Welcome back, everyone, to Talking It Out with Mike and Brian. Today, we have a lot to talk about. Our hot takes are absolute fire. And of course, we have a ton of questions from our beautiful fans, and we're excited to dive in. But first, we're going to get into our hot takes. Mike, take it away, brother. Brian, I am so excited to talk about this topic because, again, today's topic is going to be about things that we prove time and time again on this podcast, talking it out. We're going to be talking about things that other people don't talk about. We're talking about things that are real, that are in our society right now. And so without further ado, let's get to it. Let's do it. Victoria's Secret has taken away the Victoria's Secret angels. You know, the the uh, the ladies that they have as models, like the Adriana Limas. If, if you haven't, I saw Rihanna's Savage Fenty show. That joint is fire. Um, and about this, so they took away their Victoria's Secret models, or shall I say the angels. And I find it intriguing for two reasons. One, one side of me is like, are they doing this for business purposes? Or are they doing this for cultural reasons, right? Busy, and I say business purposes because, again, I brought up Rihanna. They're losing to loungewear. They're losing to, you know, Savage Fenty, to all these other lingerie brands that are coming on the market. And I mean, all my friends that I follow on social that, you know, are endorsed by these brands, I never see a Victoria's Secret one. And so I'm thinking, are they trying to get with the times? But then a part of me is like, is that their true, you know, is that their true intent? Because in an interview with Vogue, uh, their old CMO was doubling down and saying that plus size women and trans women are not people's fantasies. And so therefore they didn't want that. He was doubling down on that. Um, he was speaking on behalf of L Brands, which L Brands owns Victoria's Secret. And so I guess my hot take is where are we at in society when it comes to diversity and also attractiveness? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, man, honestly, I think it's a new day and age. Uh, I think what that gentleman said, it's it's a prehistoric way to think, you know what I mean? Like that's very old school, like the whole fantasy, the whole petite models, you know, size zero, that's not representative of, of what our actual society looks like, has always looked like, but especially what our society wants to see nowadays. They wanna see more inclusion, more uh, uh, plus size models, more people that actually represent them and look like them. So I applaud you know, the Savage Fenty for, you know, stepping up their game and, and, and having that inclusion in their shows. And I definitely think that Victoria's Secret took a huge hit, you know what I mean? Because nobody yeah. can relate to that, you know what I mean? Like all their stores, I mean, once once Rihanna came, came out with that, I mean, it was over. It was over for uh, Victoria's Secret. And, you know, business-wise, I'm sure they're scrambling and they're trying to get back uh, into the good graces with their fans and with their uh, their customers, and they need to adapt. Yeah, shout out to Bad Girl Riri. Uh, yeah. When I think of them taking away their models, I feel that it's it's twofold. One, again, like I said, it's business. It's a business transaction. I want to make sure. I hope that it's not business. I hope that they're uh, they truly care about uh, the influence that they have and the influence that they are doing to the women that buy this stuff, right? Or to the people that buy this, shall I say. Yeah. And then also, it's not just prehistoric and now they're trying to change. We've always, as the people, always wanted diversity, right? Our yeah. voice is just now being heard. And I, I know that's Correct. what you meant, so I wanna make sure that the audience knows that as well. I know that's what you meant. And attraction has more to do with personality, but in the same token, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep it I'm going to just be honest about it. At the same token, in this culture and all cultures around the world, there is a notion of what is quote unquote considered hot, right? We know when a person is good looking. We know when a person is hot. That Yet that doesn't equate to what I may necessarily be attracted to. What I'm attracted to is absolutely hot. It's absolutely gorgeous. But you may not be attracted to that same thing. You know what I mean? When I think about uh, from Bachelor Nation, Tyler Cameron, my homie from our season, right? He's considered the hot guy of Bachelor Nation, but not all girls are into the physique that Tyler has. They might be into like a Seth Rogen who has the dad bod, but has the personality of a king, right? Uh, from what we see, you know, cause I don't know the individual personally. And so just because we can say, okay, Tyler is hot. It doesn't mean that we're attracted to him. 
And I think that. But do you think it's in a way like they're attracted to him in like the same fantasy way that this guy was trying to talk about the Victoria's Secret models? Like it was like a fantasy. But in reality, like you said, at the, years from now, the looks are going to fade, right? Yeah. It's like, what are you going to be left with? The personality, the sense of humor, somebody that you can laugh with and just spend time with. I mean, the looks are going to fade. So, well, we can always say that. I want to. I want to keep us in the kitchen, right? It's hot in the kitchen. I want to keep us right there. You know, we we're, we we understand we're grown and mature individuals. Know that looks fade, right? To your question about, we're going to use TC. TC, I hope if you're listening, uh, <laughs> I love you. I'm, I'm catching you in the gym. Let's just be honest. You have no but, choice, Tyler. Sorry, bro. <laughs> but you know, that's the position that you were given, right? The hottest guy, bachelor nation. But yes, TC is considered the fantasy, quote unquote, right? For for the majority. And I don't care what no one says, numbers pure prove it, right? Demographic, the numbers prove it, right? He has the most following of any male from the show. Um, and it's not solely because of his personality. It's, it's, just, it's his aesthetics, right? Yeah. And one part is the fantasy, but then I think too, when it comes to when people date an individual, they might not necessarily want a Tyler because of a multitude of reasons. One of those reasons may be like, I'd rather have the Seth Rogen type because I don't, I don't want to feel uncomfortable if I eat this Snickers or this this ice cream, right? And I feel that that's a part of it. And two, we have these assumptions about people like Tyler Cameron. Like, are they going to be in the gym all day? Are they are they not going to be able to have a beer with me at the baseball game? Things of that nature. And so, it, it's too facet. I don't want to like discredit the Tyler Camerons and or the Angels, but also I think what we're saying is we just want representation. Yeah. We want all bodies. We want all people. We want uh, to the dumb CMO that said, you know, fat women and trans women aren't people's fantasies. That's incorrect. You know, yeah. everyone, uh, believe me, everyone is someone's fantasy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different uh, body shapes and sizes. I mean, you could a lot of people think a lot of different people are sexy. That's just the fact of the matter. Let's get deeper into this right quick. Define what fantasy is. And the reason I'm asking that, maybe that's rhetorical, but the reason I'm asking this is because the people we fantasize over when it comes to terms of looks, right? Yeah. I don't follow none of the Kardashians, but the Kardashians, we can argue about it, but we know it's true. We People follow them because they're eccentric, but they originally started following them because of what they look like. We started with Kim, right? But then they talk so much shit about her. Like we just had... You know, we were just talking to Kristen, uh, Caitlin Bristow, right? Uh, about the, what she's done to herself to make herself feel good about herself when it comes to like her lip fillers and X, Y, Z, right? But we talk shit about it, but at the same time we follow it. So what and is we, that And dynamic? they do it. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's weird. It's weird because she has, the Kardashians have basically set the, like the ideal image. I don't think it's the ideal, but you know, a lot of people Neither out there, like, a lot of people really out there think the, you know, the big booty with the full lips, like that is what men want. And it, essentially, that's, I mean, a lot of men go for that type of look nowadays. I think it depends on the man as well. It, true, true. My, my, different a lot of my bachelor nation, folks, yeah, a lot yeah. of my bachelor nation homies, that's not their look. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's established as, you know, kind of like in mainstream society, like they're the go-to when it comes to fashion and looks and things like that. But I don't know, man, it, it's, it, it's tough. Yes, you're right. They do talk a lot of shit about them. Like there's a lot of haters, but then like how many of those are, are basically turning around? It's like, okay, I got to do the same thing. I got to go do that because that's, I guess what men want. So I don't know. It's, it's a very but that's perplexing a conversation. But I was talking to our producer, we both were, and she made up a great point in the regards to women do that at times. You, you could say for it to, to, to get the attention of a man. But also, I believe personally, and I, my homeboys that we talk to every single day, they all get mad at me for saying this because we talk about some deep stuff every day. I think there is validity in cultural uh, stimulation of what we desire. So what I mean by that is when I would watch R&B music videos in the 90s, the women were predominantly skinny. Great time. Great time. Uh, yeah. Great music, <laughs> right. The women were predominantly skinny. They had uh, no curvy bodies. Right. That wasn't a big thing. Now, today, 
I put on a hip hop music video. Megan the Stallion video. And they all thick. It's like, God damn, <laughs> what, what, what took place over the last 30 years, you know? And so I, I think it is, and that's starting to subconsciously get into our brains as viewers and be like, okay, this is what is hot. This is what consumers want to see, right? And that's what, again, that's the reason I wrote my book, Making the Love You Want, is because I want people to get away from this, what society's trying to put down our throats. And that's why I appreciate like a Savage Fancy. And I'm not going to even give Victoria's Secret the credit for it because I mean, I think it was a business move. They were losing all this money. You always yeah, gotta follow absolutely. the money, right? And what's the sexiest thing, and that people need to know this, what's the Confidence. sexiest thing is, yeah, it, that's what it is. That's literally what it is. Because at the end of the day, like, you know, plastic surgery to the side, I mean, you were born with one body, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you gotta take that vessel and, you know, be as confident and sexy as, as you can be. Well, see, about that as well, I'm not even opposed to people getting plastic surgery because think about this, me and Connor always talk about this. Connor's six foot six, I'm six five on a good day, right? Six four. I like saying six five on a good day though. <laughs> and I would 100%, because you every time we say something, we gotta look at the opposite side. That's the only way that we can grow, right? Yeah. If I was five foot four and a male, if I was Kevin Hart, <laughs> right, <laughs> and I had the capability to to go from five four to six four, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pay the six thousand, oh, yeah. ten thousand, twenty, thirty thousand. I'll pay up to a hundred thousand to go from five four to six. I think four, every so. I think every man that's exactly. five four so would do that. Can't, every we can't just man. come at we can't we just, we can't just come at women like oh you got tits you got BBLs. Now you're confident. I would have done the same thing if that was. If I was, you know, not six four and the capabilities were there, so yes, I may have been confident at five four, but it's a whole new world. Quoting Aladdin, if I was six four, you know, yeah. going to six four, so I'm not even coming at them for that. I'm just stating that it's there, and confidence throughout is what it is. We love confidence. I'm not going to fault a woman for getting any type of surgery because, I mean, what I'm attracted to is your confidence. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. I 100% agree with you. Lastly, I just want to say, I don't think that people like the TCs, uh, the Adriana Limas, you know, I don't feel that they should feel bad in any way. If they work their butt off in the gym, you know how hard I work my butt off to try to obtain that uh, Thirst Trap Thursday, right? I'm doing some stuff that's dropping in January. Let it be known. I'm letting you know right now. So uh oh. What? It's going to be Preview. What? Preview what? coming right? out. But, but the reason I do it is I'm gonna be so transparent. One, the, let's be honest, Brian. The world we live in, we get paid for having a nice body. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah, it's just true. Right? Listen, besides besides pictures with Rachel, the yeah. second most liked and viewed are the thirst traps. Like it is what yes. it is. Like it you is gotta. What it is. I, I don't like the, people the that machine can needs be to be fed. I don't know. I I, I didn't make the rules, but that's just yeah. The way we didn't it make is. the rules. It's just the way it is. And therefore, but then two, and something even bigger, which to me is a very important, even before going on TV and just trying to get a nice body for some dollars. The reason I want a nice body, isn't, and I'm going to be honest, it's not even for health reasons. It's because I want to prove to myself that I put in the work to yeah. obtain it. Like, it is not easy. It's like you want to put, it's like you want to push your, your limits in every aspect of life, right? Like career wise, you want to. Yes. You want to build an empire like you want to keep going until you reach that ultimate climactic goal. Same thing with your body. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I love the saying it's you versus you. And always it that's it. Like, you're not competing with Tyler Cameron. You're not competing with me. You're not competing with anybody else. It's Mike versus Mike. What so I, I love. What's that? Sorry, I cut your train of thought. My apologies. No, no, no. I'm, I was going to say. Mike, you should only always be, you should be a horse of blinders on. You should be somebody that's, that's only going to focus on improving you, whether that's physically, emotionally, spiritually, like that's how we should all, all, all think. But unfortunately, social media, there's a lot of the comparison game going on. You see all these different images, different bodies, different, you know, personality types online. And it's, you get, people get caught up in that, but like I said, they should just focus on themselves and, and maximizing their vessel that they were put on this earth with. I love that. Comparison is a thief of joy. Yes. I put on my I put on my uh on my Twitter one time I was speaking to the the lack of imagination that companies like Victoria's Secret used to be because they only showed one form of beauty. 
that lacks so much imagination in that yeah. regard, right? And I think it's so illuminating when I see a beautiful array of colors, a beautiful array of bodies, a beautiful array of individuality within yeah. people. This is why I love living in cities like my city, Austin, because I see it is weird. I ain't gonna lie, keep Austin weird, but it's a beautiful array of personality, right? Yeah. When I used to live in England, the hot guy was the white dude that wore the the, the pretty boy outfits, like the Zara outfits. He had a, a sleeve and his hair was one way. It was like pinpoint. You could pinpoint, right? It's like cookie and cutter. Like It was very cookie yeah. cutter. Thank you. That's wow. the terminology. And it shouldn't be that. I'm you know, attracted to my ladies that they have their own individual personality. But with that being said, I'm not going to doubt down someone for working their tail off to get the body that they desire. Like I know TC works his butt off. That is not yeah. easy. Now, TC is still on the younger side, so therefore his metabolism probably hasn't slowed down <laughs> as much. But I'm telling you right now, maybe 34 this year. Lord, I eat one pint of ice cream. It's bro, like, it's like, it's all right here, bro. It's like yeah, the, tire, like, the tire oh. in the midsection, add yeah. it on. I'm like, brother can't have no cookies and cream? Jo join the club, bro. <laughs> I'm 41 and you know, I, I experienced that years ago. So I gotta be extra careful. And that's yeah. just me. Somebody else may not want to do that. You know what I mean? They want to, yeah. they want to indulge and live life. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not knocking them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that at all. Like, but don't, the, uh, that person doesn't need to, uh, to knock the other person as well. You know how many times when Connor, cause Connor really doesn't drink much at all. I've slowed my drinking down quite drastically to get this, this thing I got coming in January. And we've gone out and people shit on us so hard. Why? Because because we're not drinking. Why do you it's think like, that is? Why do you think it, that is? Like, why is that? Like, why does that even have to happen? Because I've experienced that too. I went to I went to Vegas a couple weekends ago. Yeah. And yeah, like I think I was shooting some fitness stuff a week later, and it's like, all right, I gotta slow it down in Vegas. Like, I'll drink, but yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, people are ordering shots and ordering for the whole table, and it's like, and you know, you get a little peer pressure here and there, but. Why does it have to be like that? Like, why? Like, are you gonna have extra fun if I drink? Like, I'm gonna, I'm having fun. That's what it is. I, I think that, you know, when we do things like that, we want to make sure that the other person is enjoying with this. Because yeah. every now and then, I call it my Diddy mode, right? Where I act like I feel like I'm P Diddy, and I'm just, you gotta catch me when I'm in this mode. I just want to buy everything. For I don't care if it's ten thousand dollars. I'm spending it. Every now and then, like twice a year, I get like that, and I just want to do it, right? I <laughs> just don't stop me, and. I want everyone, I think in my head, I want everyone to enjoy what I'm enjoying. So I want you to drink. Yeah, yeah. But, but do you feel you like still sometimes- have just as much fun without the drinking. What's your hot take on me? All right, man. Um, it's actually something that I saw last weekend that made me personally cringe. Maybe other people out there think it was super bold. For me, I just get secondhand embarrassment when I see stuff like this. Um, it was actually on the BET Awards uh, red carpet. Uh, I saw an, a very awkward exchange between Jack Harlow, who basically shot his shot at Sweetie while she was doing an interview, or at least she was about to start talking to the lady who was going to ask her the question. And like I said, I had to literally turn away. Like I get secondhand embarrassment if like I hear what the guy is saying, because it usually is just a disaster and it doesn't work. Um, and the guy just looks like a total idiot. Um, but like, I guess my, my hot point is, fellas, like, you can't just run up on a female and catch them off guard. Like, when you do stuff like that, you know, when they're, when they're not ready or when they're doing something, the chances of failure and of you not getting <laughs> the digits, astronomical. <laughs> uh, like, rise astronomically. I feel like women need to kind of like assess you assess the situation and like welcome you into their personal space and it just seemed like jack harlow violated her personal space like as a surprise and then you know there was a little awkward exchange now don't get me wrong jack harlow showed a lot of what i call intestinal fortitude going up and stepping up like that on camera albeit um but at the same time he's a star OK, I feel like he could get away with it or something like that, because even though it's cringeworthy, it's like you're Jack Harlow. You know what I mean? You're you're a pop star. You're a rap star like you're you're number one on the charts or whatnot. Like you can make moves like that. And more than likely, it's going to go in your favor. 
know what yeah. I'm saying? But for example, I can't tell you how many times I've seen dudes, like let's say at the gym, just regular average Joes or non-famous people, right? Let's talk about them. You know, how many of these dudes at the gym approach females like who are legit mid-workout? I'm talking headphones on, game face on, putting in work, and dudes will interrupt them and ask them like, hey, can you turn down yeah. your music? It's like, and then they say it? like, hi, my name's John. You know, do you come here often? And the girl is just looking at him like, what are you doing, bro? Like, this ain't it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then like the guy just embarrassingly walks away. Like, I've seen that. I've heard that before. And I literally got to get off the machine I'm on and just like walk away because it's so embarrassing. Like secondhand embarrassment, like I said. You know what I mean? And it's just like quick story. Same scenario, right? Let's hear it. I, hear it. I actually was in a club. I stepped up to a female one time, but I did it surprisingly. I did it you know, kamikaze style. I just went in like with, she wasn't even looking at me. She was with a group of friends. She wasn't looking at me. I tapped her, you know, on the shoulder or I got her attention. She turns around and I could already tell she was kind of uncomfortable. Like I was in her personal space and I just said, Hey, you know, I forgot what I said to her, but her answer was, I have a boyfriend and he's coming now. Okay. No worries. Respect. You know, I just thought you were beautiful, whatever, this and that. And I, and I walked away. No, no, no harm, no foul. I'm, I'm humble enough to walk away. I didn't insult her, nothing. She just said she had a boyfriend. I respected her boundaries. I walked away. So I walked away, but I stood semi near her group and I was talking to my boys. But then I see her kind of peeping me, like looking me up and down. Then she calls me back over and she's like, this was like 10 minutes later. She's like, oh. Yeah, my boyfriend's not coming. I was like, you don't have a boyfriend, do you? She's like, no, I don't. She <laughs> never had a boyfriend. So it's like, that's what I'm saying when it comes to like, since I stepped up to her so surprisingly, she was like, I don't care how good you look. I can't really assess this situation right now. You need to just get up on my face. So I'm going to just tell you any excuse that I can to, yeah. to get you out. Right. But then when she started analyzing me, looked me up and down, it's like, okay, he's pretty yeah. cute. Let me call him over again. You know what I'm saying? Has that ever happened to you? Like, I just think that guys have to have that mentality. Like, get a look. Get a little hair twirl. I don't know. Get, get some type of message or sign that, hey, it's okay to come over. That's just me. No, that's, that's, that's not just you. That's just what it's supposed to be. 80%, I'm sorry, 80% of communication is body language. Yeah. You know, only 20% is verbal. So you're, you're, in, you're completely right in that regard. Uh, I love how you said assess the situation. That is the exact terminology I use with the homies. Like, they're like, Mike, go talk to her. I'm like, bro, I gotta assess the situation. <laughs> it's yep, true. Yep, you yep. must assess the situation. I'm not gonna just walk up to her. I, you know, I yeah. don't know what's going on. Environment, who is she with? Yeah. Like, what are you gonna say? Like, all this has to be kind of planned yeah. out. You know what I'm saying? They have to go back to Hitch. If y'all have seen Hitch, if you haven't seen it, what are you, where have you been doing? Like, you know, when he's at the bar. And this is like this baddie that all the guys want. That's how they portray her. It's like yeah. all these gentlemen around her. And Will assesses the situation. His character does. And so what he does, is, I love this, by the way. This is something I have done. And it's, it's, it, it's, it's awesome. He said to himself in his head, I'm not going to be able to like get her attention the way that these other guys are doing. So the way yeah. he assesses the situation is he wants her attention, but he has to do it completely different. So he goes up to her, gives her like a 20 or, or whatever the case may be, gives her some money and say, hey, I want these drinks, which is like a neg, as we say in uh, when it comes to dating psychology, right? Yeah. And she's like, who the, you know, he walks off. He's like, hey, you want these two drinks? You know, she's got all these guys around her. And then he walks off, leaves her. She comes back like 30 seconds later, like, I don't work here. He's like, I know. But how did you think I was going to get you away from those other guys? Uh, that is what we mean by sense listen, situation. Listen, listen. You got to be strategical. That is perfect yes. strategy. Timing is everything. I bet you that woman had never been hit with something like that before. No. Right? No. So it's like when he had his opportunity, he brought it strong. He was smooth with it. And that's what won her over. In regards to the Sweetie and uh, Jack Harlow thing, first and foremost, Sweetie is a baddie. So yeah, I, she's a baddie. I, I, I can't fault Jack Harlow whatsoever. Sweetie is, is sweetie fine. So I can't fault him. Now, the way he did it, he did not assess the situation. 
I mean, he is Jack Harlow. He got a blue check. He could have easily, after her interview, like, yo, I'd love to hit you up. Uh, afterwards, I'll just DM exactly. you. Exactly. That's, cool. That's all he had to do. A little more low key. A little bit yeah. more low key about it. All he it. had to do. All he, now he's going to get embarrassed. His homie's probably making fun of him. You know, we making fun of him. Now he's on YouTube. Yeah. Listen, the guy, the guy is extremely successful. He's a great artist. I, again, I go back to that, that superstar status. I mean, maybe he could get away with it, but to the other, to, to anybody else out there, you know, just assess the situation, like Mike said. Like I've always mentioned, this is like people have asked, like, what's your number one pickup line? I don't have one. Neither do I. The number one thing that works, though, I will say, if you make eye contact with that person and they don't give you that stank face, you know, we all know what the stank face is. You look at me for yeah. If they don't give you that stank face and you proceed to walk directly to them, your chances are very high because what you're showing is pure confidence. Yeah. You made eye contact. It's like you don't waste any time. Yeah. You, just you made a beeline yeah, over to yeah, her. Beeline straight to them. You made the eye contact. They're showing you via that, you know, eye contact back that they're, you know, attracted to you as well. Yeah. You walk straight to them. And at that point in time, you know. That's what I'm saying. It's like get some type of a, a sign that they are cool with you approaching them. You know what I'm saying? Like if you sneak up on them like that. The chances of failure are very high, no matter how good you look, because again, you're just yeah, violating yeah. their personal space. I mean, for women, you know, I I, I thought it, the first time it hit me, I've never been a woman. I've never obviously I I don't know how women feel, but the first time I it even crossed my mind was when I was deployed, hmm. um, and it's like ten thousand dudes to not even maybe five hundred women. It's that terrible of ratio, wow. right? And we were all in the chow hall. And I'm just looking at these guys, like gawk at these wow. women. I mean, cause he, he, it was disgusting. I, I, I ain't gonna front, I felt bad. My my gender did terrible, right? We were, we were just terrible, right? Yeah. And at that moment, it really hit me that like, we have to be better like yeah. folks, you know? and. She don't give a damn how fine. She don't care if she liked you before. And those, she's not comfortable. That's yeah. just what I'm saying. She's just not comfortable. Women get hit on, oh, a billion times in comparison to men, right? In comparison to anyone, right? Yeah. Absolutely. We talked about TC earlier. TC don't get hit on nearly as much as women get hit on, right? Yeah. So, fellas, just have some, just have some tact, have some respect. You know what I'm saying? And assess the situation. I mean, that's all we're asking you to do. And put her in a situation where you make her comfortable. Yeah. And that will in turn allow her to be comfortable with you and you may see get somewhere. From there. Yeah, see what yeah. goes from there. We'll see. Absolutely. Jack, I'm t but this is my biggest thing. I gotta say this and I'm done, right? I low key be hating on these uh these these Jack Harlows. And the reason I be hating on them because I'd be like, yo, I can I think and this is my this that, that I call myself, you know, and I think everyone should feel this way about themselves. Like you're Brian MF and Abasolo. I'm Mike MF and Johnson, right? Straight up. I'll be saying to myself, damn, if I was in the situation that they're in, I think I could pull. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, like, I, oh, yeah. Sweetie ain't been two feet for me. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you're walking I, I, several I, red carpets with Sweetie yeah, and all the other my, women yeah, out there. Yeah. yeah. Let me just let me get my let me get my opportunity, coach. Put me in the game, coach. Like, <laughs> I'll come out on top, you know what I mean? And for people talking about, well, you have Bachelor in Paradise. My, my response to that is, well, it kind of goes with what we talked about earlier. What I find attractive is not what everyone finds attractive. I'm not just talking about looks, okay? That's my point to that. All right, Mike, that's enough of hot takes. Why don't we get into a little bit of fan Q&A? A lot of people wrote in with some really great questions. What do you say? I'm ready for it. This is what my favorite part of talking about. We get to talk to our fans and our loved ones. Cool, cool. All right, first one. One thing you learned about yourself through being on reality TV? If I go back on reality TV, I need a barber. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Wait, the, the bastard couldn't provide you with a good barber? <sighs> Bro. <laughs> Even my mama talked about my edge up. <laughs> how, you, how you be looking on TV looking like that? Come well, on, mama man. like, baby, come on now. <laughs> but outside of being vain and you know just playful, uh, I would say the one thing I learned about myself through being on reality TV is that through the reality TV that we were on, right? Yeah, yeah. Forms of it. Through The Bachelor, I'll say, 
is that get all the, the small talk out of the way quickly because, you know, when you had that opportunity with your wife, when she was the bachelorette, you were just a contestant, or me with Ray, um, Hannah, you don't talk about BS stuff. You want to get to the, mini, the nitty gritty. Yeah. You want to make them laugh. You want to show your, your, your fun side. Get to that. You, we couldn't send no good morning texts. You know, it was none of that. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, you had 30 other dudes <laughs> competing for hard as well. So you had to you had to bring it hard and bring it fast right away like you couldn't beat around the bush. Um, in that same realm, I would say it taught me or at least it showed me, it surprised me at how vulnerable I could actually be. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I thought I had reached a level of maturity where I could be vulnerable with my relationships prior to the show. But then when you're in that bubble, I mean, it, like you said, like you got to get down to the serious conversations and basically advance things to the point where you might be having that conversation with somebody in the real world after six months, but now you're having it within two weeks. So it's like, it's not comfortable. You know what I mean? That's not comfortable putting yourself out there to somebody that you just met, but I mean, fortunately for me, there was just that instant connection and instant bond. So I just felt comfortable. But I was like, like I always say with her, it just exceeded my expectations. And all I wanted to do was be more vulnerable each time I saw her. Like every single time I met with her, I want, like, I, my mind was, what can I do to advance my relationship with her? Like we got to this point in that last date, it was great, but it's like, how can I be more vulnerable and how can I get to, an even deeper level with her. Does that make sense? So Absolutely. I would say vulnerability. I love that. Uh, if you were stuck on a deserted island with five people from Bachelor Nation, who would they be and why? <laughs> uh, let's see. I would say, first of all, I mean, of course, my boy Mike, my wife, Rachel. So that's two. Uh, Mike, I'm sorry. I might leave you as a fifth wheel right now, but I'm going to say Astrid and Kevin. You know, we got a double date. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm fifth wheel. So and then one. one more person? Shit. Uh, I don't know. Maybe my boy Matt Munson. Or may, I don't know. Maybe maybe a girl for you, man, because we got we got to get you some love, too. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> so whoever you want from Bachelor Nation, we can invite her. So our answers, the reason why is completely different. So the first person I think of, I'm bringing Tyler Cameron because he's in construction. <laughs> so therefore, I'm thinking. You've been talking a lot about Tyler Cameron today. I have. But, but in, this, in regards to this question, I'm bringing him up because okay. he's in construction and therefore I'm going to make his ass build a raft. <laughs> Let's get to work, bro. Yeah, I'm, he's, he's, he's getting to work, right? So I'm bringing him. I'm going to bring, um, let me see, someone who speaks a different language. Who in Bachelor Nation speaks a different language? I speak Spanish. I mean. Okay, so I'm bringing you. <laughs> okay. Because I want to. No, I don't want you. I want to be they only here. speak Spanish on the island? <laughs> well, no, because I want to learn the language, and therefore it's a form of okay. entertainment. So okay. I'm, picking, I'm picking Bibby. Okay. Uh, so I got, I got Tyler. He's going to build a raft. Bibby's going to be my entertainment for teaching me Spanish. Uh, Maybe love interest. You never know. I'm picking, <laughs> I'm picking you for the banter in the conversation. I'm picking Rachel for her optimism and strength. And my fifth one that I'm picking is going to be, hmm. and I'm trying to think what they're, what, I'm thinking of the why, right? Why I need that individual. It'll probably be Vin, Vin Sanity, because he's a DJ. And he gonna keep it, you know, he gonna keep it like. <laughs> he's gonna music. keep you entertained, man. He's gonna keep yeah. the, move, the music pumping. Hell yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, gonna, he's gonna keep us right. So I need, I need that music pumping right there. Okay. That's that. That's, I, you went into it. You were like very. But that's my mindset. Thoughtful right? about it. Like I was just thinking in a utopian society. Like who would I want to hang out with? Like, you were like, we need to build a raft. We need to build a house. We need music. <laughs> like you were going all in. Hey, if I'm a deserted island, I need to do. I, I hear you. I hear you. I guess I didn't put as much thought into it. And then I it love all, that. Yeah. It's it's, it's a, yeah. It's a good thing. I love that. All right. If you had never gone on the Bachelor, what would you be doing for work today? Oh, easy. I'll be a financial advisor still for the day job, and then I'll be working my own business. Uh, I'll be a financial advisor nine to five, and then from uh, seven to midnight, I'll be working my own business as an entrepreneur. Same, bro. I would stick to what I what I'm good at. Stick to what I went to school for. I mean, I went yeah. to school for four almost four years for a reason, uh, post grad. So 
definitely be a chiropractor and you know just continue to help people in the community uh, with the relief of pain. So, Facts. I would I would have one hundred percent started a. Uh, I would be an agent to athletes. Uh, I would have had I would have you know my entrepreneur mindset would have started a, a sports agency, which would have had me as their financial guy, and then I would have hired uh, or my business partner would have been a lawyer, so we can handle their legal side of that as well. That's what I would have done. I would have continued to be a financial advisor and wealth management advisor. Cool. Uh, let's see. Is there anything you regret doing or not doing from your season? You first. Uh, yes, absolutely. If there's one regret that I have, I mean, obviously, everything that happened happened for a reason, and I ended up meeting my wife. So, I'm, I'm, I'm. I, I would, if I had to do it all over again, I would do everything the same just for that same result. But if I had to change or tweak one little thing was the whole Ellen debacle. Um, I don't, I don't know. So you, you, you didn't see that? You didn't see that situation on TV? Uh, people, people think I really be lying when I say I don't watch the show. I, I, I never when you say you didn't then. watch the show, you really didn't watch the show. Hey, I really um, didn't watch the show. <laughs> so it was a group date. We go on Ellen. Um, we're in the green room. We're waiting to go on. All of a sudden, a producer comes in and hands each and every one of us uh, some Speedos, like fluorescent Speedo underwears with Ellen on them. They're like, put these on. So what does Ellen love to do? Scare people. Make, you know. Dance. That, yeah, yeah, scare people, does. dance. Yeah. So like yeah. dancing is like a big part of her show and, you know, people in the audience dancing or whatever. So immediately we all thought, oh, shit, we're all going to get into our underwear and we're going to dance for the, all these people in the audience, you know, mom's watching. So immediately all of us beeline to the bar, which they conveniently set up right next to us and we're taking shots. So, and Rachel's favorite liquor at the time, she doesn't even drink that anymore, which is weird. At the time she loved fireball. Oh, so we, one is one point for Rachel. We literally, no, she doesn't drink it anymore. So kudos to her, but we were literally downing, I would say within a 30 minute span, I probably took like five or six shots. Nice. So you can imagine by the time I went out stage, like I was, woo, I, I, I didn't yeah, care yeah. what was happening, right? Yeah, so I yeah. said something, I'm not gonna reiterate, I said something that I shouldn't have said. And unfortunately I think that put me behind the eight ball because that actually sh uh, premiered prior to the show airing. Oh, so okay. I feel like people already had kind of like a little bad taste in their mouth about me about you? Okay. when I said it. So yeah, it just put me behind the eight ball. And if I think if that wouldn't have happened, like I think people would have gotten more of a fresh start and more of a fresh perspective on me from the beginning of the show on. You know I'm about to YouTube this when we get off, right? Oh yeah, YouTube it. <laughs> like, it's, I'm there. 100%. it's there. <laughs> the internet is forever. I've come to terms with it. It is what it is. It was, uh, it was something that I should have said. And Ellen probably hates me till this day but hey what are you gonna do <laughs> oh you said some, something that, ooh, I no no not to ellen it oh, was, okay you go online you'll see it it was it was a cringeworthy moment but again i was i had a lot of liquid courage at that moment okay. and i just said what i said but yes if that was one regret that would be it so on to your I, regret or lack of no nah, i mean does it say lack of uh is that what part of the question is is there any, or do not doing uh, so they're twofold, right? One is going to be vain, which I just, you know, I'll have to talk to a lot of guys from my season. They wish they would have, you know, prepared themselves, like, physical wise uh, So, again, I didn't know how big the show was, so I was like, hey, <laughs> this is me, right? Um, I got my little chest hair, my little taco meat hanging out. <laughs> like, I just went on, bro. <laughs> so, so looking back now, was. Mike would have been ready, ready. Oh, God, yeah. I, bro, I, we had Matt James on the show. What, did I t what is the advice that Matt said I gave him? There was two pieces of advice I told him. One, I said, Matt, you know, treat these women like your mother told you to be. And then two, you need to put 15 pounds of muscle on. I was dead serious. I, I, it is what it is. I don't Speaking care what anybody from says experience, about. man. And so that's the vain aspect. You know, I wish I would have, you know, prepared myself looks-wise, physicality-wise, and, you know, did some of my little taco meat. But I really don't care about that because I'm still mother MF Mike Johnson. Yeah, uh, yeah. But... Since the internet lives forever, you know how much flack I got from the homies from when I twerked? <laughs> Wait, was that that dance with the piano and all that? Next to the oh, piano? Oh, it was terrible. No, was that was that a it? piano one. That was, that was, that was fun. We were, that was we some were other thing. Okay. 
But now you twerking. We had a uh, because Hannah Brown is a uh, a beauty pageant, you know, uh, queen. Former contestant, yeah, queen. Okay. And so we did like a you know a beauty pageant, and like my talent was, I guess my talent was, we all had to do some form of dance, right? <laughs> and I could twerk, and so I and so I twerked. And like I just so embarrassed her, yo. Know? Like it was like, how, the, how did that doing, how like? did that go? Did Hannah like it? I I, I can't remember. She, I I think Hannah and the other contestants were like like caught off guard, like, whoa, like you know, wow. like whoa. <laughs> that's a know? lot. That's a lot yeah, right that's there. That's a lot of ass. <laughs> 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 but uh yeah, I wish I would have done that. But it was funny. Another fan question is, what are some dating tips for a single guy? Well, it's funny. Shout, we out, actually... shout out to the men that you know listen as well. Uh, it's funny that you say that. I mean, we mentioned obviously earlier, you know, have some tact, have some strategy, be smooth with it, show some swag as far as stepping up. But I think that you had mentioned something earlier that you told Matt James, like when you first go out on your, let's say your first date, you want to be show, show the woman respect. You know what I'm saying? Like treat her like you know, you treat your mother or you would treat, you know, one of your loved ones, you know what I'm saying? Because I think that goes a long way um, in establishing that first impression. So I would say that, just respect. Okay. I'm gonna go a little off cuff. Okay. The reason I'm gonna do that is because, I don't know if you've heard, they said they're building some type of technology to where on Twitter, they could predict your tweets based on the way that you've already tweeted. They know your personality, they know like your political viewpoint, X, Y, Z, right? Um, and so people know what I would normally say. It would be something more along the lines of respect that woman, but I'm gonna go a little bit different with this one. And it's still, the, I feel I feel truly about it, which would be to have a beautiful balance between showing the aggressive side as well as the soft and gentle side, right? There's balance, there's balance and beauty. And so don't go all the way aggressive and scare the hell out of her, but don't be, you know, have a backbone as well. You know what I mean? Don't have them go. Don't forgo your backbone, right? And so yeah. tell, if you don't like something, tell her or tell him or whoever yeah. you're dating. Tell that individual you don't like that, you know? Uh, and then also, ain't nothing wrong with like, let it, let it, letting that individual know what you like. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So I would say, to not be too aggressive, but at the same time, don't be such a pushover as well. Absolutely, absolutely. I agree with you, I agree with you. Um, worst headline you've seen of yourself? I roll my eyes at this. <laughs> so much BS, bro. So much BS. Uh, so, uh, I it's, it's stupid stuff. I don't even wanna bring it up just because it's, uh, I don't wanna, bring these individuals' names up. I would say one is uh, Mike slams Hannah Brown and they try mm -hmm. to like make it, they try to turn my words and I'm still gonna double down. She shouldn't have said what she said, right? Uh, another is uh, something about Kiki Palmer. I forget what it was. But something stupid about Kiki Palmer that they had said. I really just, I, like to me, negativity falls off of my shoulder like water. Yep. I, don't let, I don't let it stick to me, so I don't really even remember him that clearly. What about you? Oh, man, there's been a lot of them, but I would say the dumbest one, I would say, people thought I had quote unquote fake cheeks during my season. <laughs> what? Dude, the cheeks are real. What? The, the what? cheeks are real and always have been, ladies and gentlemen. I, I think that's no, a compliment. No surgery on the cheeks. <laughs> I don't know. What? One one dude mentioned it on the show. Like he said, like I, since I'm from Miami, the land of hot, uh, fake ass, fake yeah, boobs, yeah, yeah. and fake cheeks. Fake cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, dude. Whatever. Um, I I didn't take it personally. I just thought that was silly and dumb. Um, and the fact that I've never had anything done to my cheeks, it was it was pretty hilarious, actually. That that that's wild. Uh, <laughs> that's that's wild. The next one says, "Uh, Mike, drop a gym." To our fans and listeners, we love y'all, but this is not pre-rehearsal. You'd rather know that we're not, this is you know live <laughs> recording, right? So Mike, drop a gym. My gym that I'm dropping right now is, uh, it's gonna be what kind of what the advice I gave that, you know, if you're a single man, 
to always show respect, but at the same time, you know, I think you know the person you're dating wants you to keep that foot down. Uh, that would be to the guys that are single trying to date, and then just in general for everybody. I pinky promise you, if you are genuinely going out of your way and giving someone a compliment, it will make you feel good in return. Show kindness, show compassion. That crap will make you feel amazing. That's my gym. Give back, absolutely. I, I totally agree with you there. Um, Brian, what's the best advice you've ever received? <sighs> I'm gonna say, I'll, ke I'll keep it bachelor on this. Um, it's actually advice that I got prior to going on the show. Hmm. And okay. it actually helped me stay focused on why I was there, right? Um, one of my buddies, he actually lives out here in LA, uh, he told me, whatever you do, focus on Rachel. That was number one. Number two was, don't talk shit behind anybody's back. And number three was, don't start drama. And I literally took those and ran with them. Like, if you think about it, night one, I was to the point, I didn't beat around the bush like we talked about earlier. I told Rachel why I was there, I was all about her, and I remained all about her no matter what was going on around me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't distracted. Um, starting drama or talking shit behind anybody, I don't need, I didn't need to talk shit behind anybody else's back. You know what I'm saying? Like, other guys talk shit about me like looking back on the show, but I was living rent free in their head. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I was focused, <laughs> I was focused on the prize, which was Rachel. You know what I'm saying? Like they were busy talking crap about me, which then takes energy from them focusing on her. You True. get what I'm saying? And True. you know, starting drama, obviously you don't want to do that because then that is going to steer you away from your main focus. So I just followed that advice. And at the end of the day, I got to say that's some of the best advice I've ever received because it led me to my wife. So I love that. And I got to say, if there wasn't, you know, something I did wrong, it was <sighs> given too much credence to our, the, uh, the bad guy on our season. Like I was always like, I was keeping it honest. You know, I was telling him yeah. what he was doing was absurd, Yeah, but I was like, like I you were telling just, him to his face, though, right? Like you were. Oh yeah, I don't. No, I don't got to talk about nobody. I, that's I, real. That's I'm real. I'm gonna talk to you. You know, I'm gonna talk to the source. Like, if you're the one doing this absurd things, I'm gonna tell you to your face, right? Yeah. I have. I'm a. I'm a. I'm comfortable in who I am as a man, and I'm gonna tell you to your face, right? Yeah. But at the same time, I'm saying I didn't have to be like worried about that. But he was pissing me off because like I'm trying to go up for Hannah, and the things he was doing was making her feel bad, and so that's why I did that. Right. I'm just saying I probably could have been a bit I don't probably I could have been a bit better in that regard and bought my own clippers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're halfway through the year. What's your best and worst part of 2021 so far? Uh um best part I would say is reuniting with uh Rachel in LA, right? Um yeah. You know, I was in Miami for the first fourth of the year and uh, moved here in April. And, you know, we're together again. We're we've got a nice little condo uh, in L.A. And, you know, she's doing her thing. I just locked down an office, so it should be over in about a month. So, you know, just things, great things are happening, um, you know, moving forward. I'm just looking to, you know, serving the L.A. community and just, you know. Are you going to have a grand things. opening? I, I definitely will. I definitely will. And you're invited, of course. Let me know. I'll, uh, you know, show support. I love. I love showing support for your homies. I, oh, yeah, I really man. do love doing that stuff. So yeah, let me know. Uh, try, try to make sure I can slide through. I Congrats appreciate on that. that. I appreciate What's, that. What about the worst part of 2021? Worst so far? part? <sighs> um, I mean, I guess it's just gotta be like the the bleeding over of 2020, and like <laughs> you know, still dealing with COVID. Yeah. You know, and having all the restrictions and stuff, but you know, it is what it is. You know, uh, we're all trying to keep each other safe. So I would say that. That's, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, for me, kind of echoing your first one of the worst, the best part, shall I say, is being around human beings. Yeah. Like being that human interaction people. again. Yeah. Yes. Like, for me, despite what people may feel, I am an introvert and 
COVID made it worse. Like I am in my house quite often. I really, <laughs> You're a really homebody. Am. I am a homebody for sure. But when I go out, I when I'm, I'm all the way out there, like one million percent. Like I experience it. All. When you when you go out, you go hard. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why I say like when I am decide to drink, oh, I, are we gonna have a good time? <laughs> you know. Uh, the worst part of 21 so far, to me, this comes from my financial advisor mindset, is just the, uh, the, uh, the uncertainty. The uncertainty, but then also uh, knowing that not everyone is, uh, is financially in good positions, right? I, I, I know that's like kind of a mood killer, but I'm a financial guy, I'm an analyst, you know? Yeah. And, it's not good for everybody. And so that, that's, that's not a really cool thing. I don't like seeing that. Uh, another one I would say is the worst part of 21 so far is, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna stick with that one. I'm gonna stick with that first one. I'm just curious. You mentioned that you became even more of an introvert, right? During the yeah. pandemic, you say you're a homebody. Do you prefer a homebody or a woman that likes to go out, like good question, what, good question. What, what, where do you fall on that? If you put a gun in my head and I had to choose, I would probably prefer an extrovert. And so, cause I, I like the opposite in that regard because uh, you know, my lady would help me, you know, she's like, Mike, you coming to this event, you know, <laughs> uh, she, you know, she'll make me get out. She'll yeah. like, I still haven't seen the bats in Austin. Like it's an attraction here. Right. And I've been living here since last October. You know, if I had an extroverted lady, she she'd be like, "Come on, let's go see the bats." I, you know, I, I like things like that. I just don't. A, a woman would do want it. to go see some bats. <laughs> it's just what comes to mind. Like, there's lots of things in Austin that yeah. I haven't done yet. But if I had, you know, if my lady was like, "Babe, come on, stop tripping," then I would. I'm gonna do it because you know she's yeah. like, I, I I desire that, so I would say that. But I have no problem if she a homebody. We are gonna be kicking back in our PJs, having a good time, eating our ice cream. <laughs> I feel you, man. I feel you. Rachel, Rachel is an extrovert. She loves to get out there and network. And that's good for me because she pushes me to do something that, you know, I'm like you. I'm more of like a homebody. But it's good to have that balance, you know, that significant other that yeah. you know, can bring out the best in Correct. other aspects that, you know, you know, you might not shine in. Correct. And that, that's what I like about it. Right. I just, yeah. you know, I have nothing wrong with I've dated introverted women. And on a Friday and Saturday, we'd be at the house chilling. But I love those moments too, cause I like cuddling. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of cool. Who does it? Who does it? Right? Yeah, yeah. I like cuddling. You know, a little touchy, little, touchy, feeling, yeah, feeling. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know. Throw, yeah. throw some Netflix and chill. You know, actually Netflix and chill, not Netflix and chill. You know, the rated R version. But like, <laughs> you know, actually I, I, Netflix. I like that. Yeah, actually Netflix, right? I I, I, I totally like feel you. Like, watch a documentary, learn something new. Yeah, have you know, a explore, conversation, explore like, each other's minds. Yes, I like, love that. That to me is, I, yeah, I adore that. I love that stuff as well. So put a gun in my face. I'm going to say extroverted woman, but psh, I love my introverted women too. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, so what NFL or NBA team would you play for? And also, this is the first time we've ever spoken about sports on this channel, by the way, ever. And also, who's going to win the NBA championship? The Suns or, or the, the Bucks Hawks. or the Hawks? I'm going to say the Hawks. You're gonna say the Hawks win it all? I, I no, no, no. Out of the two, out of the two. It'll well, they gotta win. They gotta win their series first. They're the tied Bucks. up. I mean, Giannis is hurt. Come on, let's be honest. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, I. Well, you got I mean, this is an easy one for me. NFL, NBA. I'm a huge Miami Dolphins, Miami Heat fan. I'm a hometown guy, so that's Trash. A, that. <laughs> <laughs> mediocrity is what it is, man. Like, well, Heat have been successful in in recent years, but Dolphins, it's the worst Trash. being mediocre. Because you don't get a high draft pick, you don't make the playoffs. You're just like stuck in that limbo, that middle ground that you, nobody goes anywhere. So, yes. you know, hopefully that that things will change with them. But Dolphins and Heat, and then as far as who's going to win the NBA championship, I like the Phoenix Suns, man. I want CP3 to win his first championship. Yeah. So, sixteen seasons, bro. Yeah, man. I I agree with you. I want the Suns to win it too, just because of CP3 gonna go out on top. You know, you want to see that story, right? You want, yeah. you really want to see that story. Absolutely. So I love I love for him to win it. Out of my favorite NBA NFL teams, Dallas Cowboys all day. Cowboys, and when I we didn't have even a, say that. <laughs> when we go further in the playoffs and have a better record than you running our marathon. <laughs> 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 all 
I brought it back up. You see that full circle? Uh, oh, man. NBA teams. I don't have a favorite NBA team. I have favorite players in the NBA. No Mavs? You can stick with Dallas? I love my Mavericks, right? I, I, I love my Mavericks. Uh, but I'll be lying to myself if I say, like, I'm choosing a team. Like, I, like, I love Luka. I love Russell Westbrook. He's getting older, right? So I would say John Morant is a younger version. Uh, I, I like... And I like I like Trey. Trey is you know Ice Trey, baby. Ice he gets he's cold. I, I, I like the small guys. Luca's six seven, so he's not small. But I, I like the guys with a chip on his shoulder. Like in football, Steve Smith was my favorite wide receiver because he's small. He had a chip on his shoulder. He's a great one. He was a great one. I just want to say I love every single last one of you guys that have subscribed, uh, and then you could DM me afterwards. <laughs> I'll just be I'm playful. But we want to seriously hear from you guys. What interactions do you want us to do? Do you want us to like do a show to where we, we go across the country? Do you want us to have certain guests on, certain topics that you want us to talk about? Tell us. We want to hear it. Yeah. Y'all know I'll be responding to a lot of y'all on social, so tell us. We want we want to feel the, the the pulse of our fans out there. We want to know exactly what you guys are thinking, what you want to know about, what you want us to talk about. So I totally agree with Mike. Um, you know, submit your questions, your thoughts, your ideas, and uh, we'll make it happen. Yes, sir. And to all of our listeners, of course, and to all of you out there, thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. You know, we always love to hear your opinions. Like I said, I can't state it enough. Your stories, your insights. So please don't forget to like, comment, follow. Message us on social at Talking Out BN. That's Talking Out B as in Bachelor in his nation on IG, Facebook, and Twitter. And as always... Baby, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to right now. Baby, don't DM me no more. Just subscribe. Only.